when Train Simulator World came out and did not support at all joysticks at all, I literally <laughs> have made up my quest to find a way to control a train. So you can quickly push W to go into gear and then you can kind of start your throttle and you get your train rolling. So there's nothing really wrong with this. Just for me being a train simulator buff, I wanted to use more controls and I want a tactile feel for a train. I mean, look at me, I put a piece of copper here in front of my train simulator so I can feel the steel. So this is why I sought out to find a way to better hook up all of my joysticks to my train simulator. Now the SciTech joystick is a great addition that I've seen many people talk about this online that they would love to use this. So I use this as the first way to uh, control the train. Let's go through and how I'll show you how I did it. What I built is a system that fires key sequences, specific millisecond key sequences to actually evoke changes in the simulator. Zero here, so I can, I can set one notch. See, now we're in notch one. Now we have notch two, notch three, notch four, notch five, six, and so on. And we can also do the whole thing. We slide all the way down. It'll actually go all the way off. You can slide all the way up, it'll go up. Now this is where it's cool too, you can slide to the middle, go to 50%, and then you can see the throttle went roughly to 50%. So I just have one button here that allows me to look down, and I kind of tilted it just a little bit to the right so I can kind of see my gauges and let go and it pops back up. I also have two buttons here to look left. I can look left out the window, or I can click and look right out the window. Click this to release the brake pressure. You can see it's going down. So now we're, down, we're back down to zero. Let's release our independent brake like this. And let's now click the, uh, click the forward. We'll go forward, it's forward now. And now let's go half throttle. Let's get this huge beast going and we're rolling. And I'll give it a little, little horn just to say I'm moving. I don't know if that's the laws in Europe or not. <laughs> And here we go, we're rolling. So this is really cool. So as we come up and we don't have any wheels slipping, I'm just now gonna click my throttle a little higher. We're now at throttle four. Oh, this is nice. And we're rolling. Okay, now at throttle six. Now let's try out the braking now. So first things first, we could just put down our throttle down to zero. And we could even just use a little independent just to uh, slow down. And let's watch the speed drop. And it's slowly coming down. And we could also um, we could also add a bit more train brake as well. And that'll really help. You see, I'm sliding it here. So you can see I'm bringing up the train brake, and it's it's showing me on the gauge, and the speed is coming down. I'm going to release that. Okay, brake is off now. Let's release the independent. Look down, you can see, yeah, the independent is off. Let's get going again. Um, I can click and view all my controls and the next distance to the next um, point. So what this allows me to do is just click the button and see my speed limit, but then I can let go and it's gone. And that really forces me to be in the simulator because I'm not, I'm not seeing the information. I have to force my brain to remember the information. The, it's, it's an executable, so you can just run this on your Windows system. Um, it has a little drop down here, which you click, and this actually shows you all of the different profiles that exist. Now this is where it's cool. All of your profiles and your settings are run in a spreadsheet. So all of the settings, you can see our profile 166 and all of the settings, we'll come back to that later, are all stored in a CSV. So you can open in any program, it's fast, you can back it up. So you simply just choose your class 166, click submit, and then actually the profile becomes active down here. So let's say I want to know what buttons are being pushed on my SciTech throttle. I simply go to number three. I know this is this throttle. I then can just slide some axes and then I can just watch the information change. So I know I'm working with the SciTech throttle. Then I can actually push buttons. You see one, two, three, four. Now watch down here, that's just one, two, three, four. So this lets you quickly identify which buttons and then you come down and just add it to your script. Uh, the number, that's the joystick number, the axes, that's the axes. So in this case, it was joy, you know, X was on the left and then Y was in the middle. 
Then we have the type, then we have the segment. This works for notches. We have the minimum and maximum. So something will only be activated when it's between a specific uh, joystick setting. And then which keys are being pushed. So in this case, D is going down. We're then holding off for 180 milliseconds. Then D is being released. This allows to fire key commands at the simulator and actually achieve control over the, the joysticks. Now also included in the Simicheck software is a key reader. So if you want to know what key sequences, for example, the apostrophe is, it'll actually show you the scan code as well as the VK code. And it actually shows you how long. So if I hold it down and then release, I just did that for 930, that's 937 seconds. That was a thousand milliseconds. If I go faster, you can see that's 110. So this allows you to quickly figure out the key sequences. You would then come down here and simply change the milliseconds and you actually have a fully working system. And you click reload and then you choose your profile and then you're back online using the system. Now this is a very alpha software just started. We need people to help us out and really mold to the final product to make sure this is something that really everyone's gonna use. Please reach out to us, sydneycheck.com. Click sign up. We're gonna send you an alpha version of the software and get you started. We would love to work with you. Thank you.